Good afternoon, and welcome to a Blind Prime channel update. I'm your host, Blind Prime, and for today, we're going to talk about something I just learned last night. I learned that the BrickLink Designer Program is uh, accepting entries for their Series 6. How cool is that? They're accepting entries, which means I can enter. And I've studied it up. I've been looking into it before coming to you. So I have a few things, a little bullet list of things that I need to talk about and uh, you know, what, what needs to happen for this project to, to work. Because uh, before I get into the bullet list, I, well, that'll be part of the bullet list. But for the most part, this project's nearly finished. And uh, you know, the first thing on the list is that I have nine days to finish it up, create a digital program that has a digital 3D render of this, as well as a digital 3D render of an instruction manual. Doesn't have to be a good one. It just has to be one that, that explains, you know, what's going where and how. And I need to turn all that in before the nine days is up. So that's bullet point number one. Nine days. The timer is ticking. And that's nine days including today. Next one on the bullet list is that there uh you can't do it in the opposite direction so if you turned in a project to lego ideas you have to wait three years until you can do anything with that project if it fails if it succeeds you've lost the project it now belongs to lego the bricklink individuals explained that if you turn in a project to bricklink's designer program and it does not succeed you can turn that project into Lego. They don't keep it for three years to five years. They don't, they don't do what Lego does. They just accept it for the competition, and if it does not succeed in the competition, then they give it back to you. I don't know what happens to it if, they, if it succeeds at the competition. Does BrickLink now own it? I have not been able to learn that information. I'm still looking into it to figure that out. So, you know, here we're just talking about what I've learned so far. And that's one of the questions that I have yet to get answered, and I will get an answer for it uh, as soon as I possibly can. Next thing on the bullet list is that the 3D render part is very important because once you conduct your 3D render of the project, you can then um, you know screen it for their Series 6 brick, uh, brick palette, which means that they have a set number of bricks and a set number of brick colors, that the project is allowed to utilize because that's what currently the lego factories are producing and it has to be 86 percent or more of that list it can't be 85 percent or less of that list because it will not be accepted and apparently many figures are um they they make that number go down because many figures will always be rejected uh so that that's something to remember and cloth pieces will always be rejected no matter what uh, but they can be accepted. It's just that the automatic rejection process will mark them as part of the 14% of, um, you know, of, of the, the rejects. So, you know, if you need to get it to 86% you know, or above, know that your minifigures are going to remove that percentage. So the percentage of your parts has actually got to be less if you have a lot of minifigures involved because every one of those minifigures is going to count that percentage down further. So you'll need to ensure that your bricks are, uh, are appropriate. Um, another bullet point list, they were like, it has to be buildable and it has to be sturdy. It, 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 it has to be something that you can create. Uh, so that's kind of funny. I'm wondering how many people just turned in Lego idea projects that they designed on their computer, but never have actually built in real life. So that, that's a positive for me, at least, because I've already built the majority of it IRL. So all I need to do is convert it into digital. Um, now, being blind, that is a nigh-impossible task for me, so I'm going to have to get a sighted person to assist me with that particular part, and I'm hoping that Seawall will be able to help me with that because you know he's one of the people who's been helping me design this LEGO project for years now. And... I'm hoping that he can come over and we can sit down and do it, and so long as his work doesn't give him too much to do. So that's that. Uh, I will need help 
uh, transferring my project into that. Um, next thing is that the palette thing is a little annoying because I have fun pieces that I want to include, like this really tall column that I'm pretty sure will not be available in the palette. And uh, this, this shrine that I've made, I've made a lot of, yeah, I've used a lot of unique pieces in it that came from different sets, and they may not be included in the palette. Uh, those are the you know, just important things to remember. I may have to get rid of my gem shrine, uh, where where minifigures could, uh, you know, could, could come here and stare at the cool rock in the center of it. Uh, I may have to get rid of it, you know, because it, it may not uh, fit. Uh, main, mainly this 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 top piece, which is a Hogwarts castle piece. So, if this top piece is being reproduced, then maybe it will be successful. I, I don't know about the column, though. I think the column came from a Lord of the Rings set. So I don't know about the column, but I am nah, I'm on the fence about the top of the shrine. Now, that's the, uh, the, the thing about the palette that I'll have to figure out for myself in the next nine days. We're going to have to do a lot of play around. But at the same time, it's also something I've been wanting to do for this series because there's bricks that I want to use that I don't have. So I've been... Uh, I, I've been um, trying to use other bricks to kind of get to what I want I want to build. Um, for instance, there's a new piece out there that is a two-plate uh, two tall piece, and it's perfect for lining up my Technic pieces on the side that I can put pins with studs on the side to make the cliff faces. I've been doing two plates and then the, the, the Technic piece and then a plate above. Uh, as you're as you're supposed to do. So if I manage to get the pieces that are two plates tall, I can actually remove one piece from that assembly, and it will just be three pieces instead of the four pieces it currently is. And there's other things I can do to lessen the piece count because the goal is to get it under four thousand, and that's the other um, that's the other bullet point. Oh my God, I forgot what. Anyway. My mind is all over the place. I am so excited. It's running in nine different directions because of because of what I learned. So I've learned that uh, I'm going to need to be under 4,000 pieces, but above 350 pieces. I can't have any minifigures until I get 375 fig pieces. For every 375 fig uh, pe for every 375 pieces, you can have one figure. Skeletons don't count. Uh, you can also, for every minifigure you have, you need one head for each of them that doesn't have uh, anything to do with the other one. So you can't have copies of heads excluding skeletons. So, you know, understanding the skeleton rule, I'm like, oh boy, there are going to be a lot of skeletons in this thing. Because, I mean, it's an ancient cave system, and I've been really wanting to throw skeletons in amongst the corners and stuff. And I, I am excited to be able to just toss some skeletons into this guy on the uh, on the design project part, on, you know, on, the, on the computer. That would be fun, because I don't have enough skeletons. And uh, the skeletons I do have, I don't know where they're at. Uh, they're, they're all over the place. Um... So that's exciting. Uh, you know, I, I think that's also very fun. And the piece palette will help you out with designing your Lego minifigures. You apparently can't use minifigures from drastically different Lego series. For instance, you can't use 80s Ice Spaceman you, with NASA Spaceman from modern day. You can't mix those two, even though I think that would be a really fun set. Uh, for have like uh, NASA astronauts who are exploring space come across this ice planet filled with these ice guys. I, I, I think that would be cool, and they're limiting themselves there with creativity. Uh, you know, I, I get that they're trying to keep things within a theme, but I think making the, the ice people, you know, making them into um, into something that is is like an alien species or something would be really neat. So that's another, you know bracket on the list the uh, bullet points and there's the other bullet point of um the lego ideas thing if if i turn this project into lego ideas i can't do anything with this project for three to five years if i turn this pro you know, if i lose if i win the lego ideas i lose the project forever uh, i can show pictures and state i did this but i can't sell it i can't even sell the pictures of it so and that's something I need to always remember when it comes to Lego ideas. The Bricklink, on the other hand, is different. They state, if you lose the competition, 
You can do whatever you want with it. You can turn it into Lego ideas. The guy specifically said he would advise doing BrickLink first, then Lego ideas, if it fails at BrickLink. Now, I don't know what happens if it succeeds at BrickLink. That is still up for debate, at least in my head. I'm still learning as I go. I need to find the information out about that. What happens if I win? Do I lose access to my Lego project if I succeed? That is something important I need to learn. And uh, once I learn it, I will be sharing it with you so that if you want to do something like this, you'll have all the information you need without doing all the legwork that I've been having to do just to figure it out. Okay, so finally we come to some fun stuff, uh, prize-wise. So if I get accepted, the prize is 5% of net profit. Now to those individuals who don't know, there's a gross profit in companies and there's a net profit in companies. And usually everything's taken out of gross profit and net profit is given to the company that did everything. So my 5% would be taken out of gross, but not in this case. This case, they specified net. So that means that, uh, say, I make a set that sells for an amount of money and uh, after all expenses are, are done with the set, you know, all the expenses are taken out and uh, those things, uh, so, so gross, goes to expenses, and then after that, you get net. So if my set is $100 in the net profit range, that means I get 5% of that $100 per set, $5. If my set sells 1,000 copies, which plenty of them have sold at least 1,000 copies, then I get $5,000. Yeah the grand prize for lego ideas i can get if i sell 5000 if i sell 1000 copies and the net profit from each of those copies equals $100 and i i, I mean i simplified the math as much as possible to give you an understanding of uh, of the possible gains to be made uh just so that you you you, you get it as um as a visually impaired person who may ha be having uh, difficulty reading the terms of use and getting everything straight and orderly in your mind. So that's what's going on there. I, I'm, I'm very excited about this. I think it's really cool, and I definitely want to see this succeed. So if you want to help me make this project succeed, you want to help me win the prize money, uh, that I will definitely be putting nearly 100% back into the channel. I have some credit cards to pay off because I've been utilizing credit cards to help pay for the channel and get things to you, my, my, my viewers and my listeners. Uh, but winning a competition and actually getting some, uh, some money flowing in could be very helpful for this YouTube channel. Um, though I would have to be careful because I'm on SSI and I gotta be, I, I, I gotta watch out for that. Um, I've gotta figure that part out if I do win. But you know, we're gonna figure that part out as we go. First off though, we gotta turn it in. We gotta make the project happen. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna finish up this Lego Ideas project I've been working on, the modular cave system, and we are going to turn it into something that we can turn into Lego Designer. And learning that I'm not limited to one, I'm going to uh, I'm going to make some other sets and turn them in. I've got my Lego stand that I utilize for my cell phone, the cell phone stand I developed and built for my channel. I'm thinking about turning that in as a project. And my building Braille, all the building Braille that we've talked about on this channel. I'm going to turn it in, and it's going to be version 2 because I found plenty of problems with building Braille. And I am going to fix all of those problems with version 2. And it's actually, a lot of the problems are going to be fixed by, uh, by changing what the pieces are. Um, and instead of utilizing what I've been doing, I'm just going to use one-by-ones all the way. One-by-one -one tiles and one-by-one -one studs, and that will make the LEGO Braille project so much easier oh my god uh, i made such a mistake buying pieces that are one by twos and one by threes and two by twos i, I screwed up and i'll admit it i should have just done one by ones and called it a day that would have been so much easier and that is what the lego design pro you know that's what i'll be turning in for that as well the lay you know, building braille will be getting turned in the cell phone stand will be getting turned in and the cave project will be turned getting turned in because I believe, you know, they, they did request that there's smaller sets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset my big 4,000-piece set of the uh, LEGO Ideas Mountain Cave project. Um, 
the has its tentative title title because I've been calling that. I've been calling it that for over a year now on this channel. You're building and designing this thing. So I'm gonna be turning that in, finishing it up, turning in the the cell phone stand, turning in the building braille, because they want smaller sets. And I advise you do the same. If you've got a set that's you know like 400 pieces or less, you know, it's 350 to like 450 pieces is their smaller range of sets. So if you have something like that, please turn it into them. Uh, they they do want smaller sets. They requested smaller sets. So make them some smaller sets because they really want to do the bigger ones, but they have to keep an average. And that's another bullet point I forgot about. There's an average of 2.5K pieces, piece count. 2,500 pieces. That is the average they're trying to accomplish. So whenever they do a thing of 4,000 pieces that's way up here, they got to come way down here and get one that's 400 pieces to offset so they can put it kind of in a medium of 2,500 pieces. So for every big set, they need a small set. And if they get too many middle sets, they can't get a big set or a small set because it's already in the middle, the Goldilocks zone. So they can't do smaller sets or bigger sets to kind of offset the Goldilocks zone. If they get too much in the Goldilocks zone, they're, they're locked in at making a Goldilocks zone series. Like apparently series five is a bunch of Goldilocks zone uh, builds, a bunch of builds that are 2,500 pieces or uh, your like 1,000 pieces to 2,500 pieces or something like that. That, that. That's the medium range of sets. So please look up the rules for yourself. Figure it out. Uh, I hope that I've been able to assist you whenever it comes to understanding what's going on here. Either that or I was just a chaotic mess because my mind is going all over the place. I've got five pots on the fire and I am mixing them all. And it is, you know, right? that's when I thrive. You know, at me, being an individual with uh, adult onset ADD, I have always something on the oven. I'm mixing multiple pots, and if, if I just get one single thing, I can't focus on one single thing. So I've got to have multiple projects running, and it's usually whenever I'm feeling my best. It's when i got lots of it. So this is really fun. This is exciting for me. I can't wait to, uh, to, to, to do this. I need your help, though in helping me with this project. So please go over my Lego Ideas playlist and let me know what, what I can improve, what I can make better, because you know, turning this into the designer project, I think it could actually succeed. I think that it could be a $300 set. I do think these things. I don't want it to be a $300 set. I'd like it to be more on the 250 range or even just $200. Uh, I think $200 would be uh, appropriate, but there's a lot, there's a lot of pieces in this set and that's going to be another fun thing about getting it into the three-dimensional program uh, you know the computer program is actually me learning how many pieces are in this monster i've been making that is very stable and is not associated with lego icons at all uh yeah technic pins are utilized to connect pieces together but those technic pins and those piece connections are not associated with Lego City or Lego Icons because apparently to do, you know, because they, they made a modular band. Uh, the modular band means you can't make it look like a Lego Icon, so you can't have the sidewalk and, and the lamp posts like that. You have to do something different. So they said building, sidewalk, lamp posts, no, no. You can have a building that doesn't have its edges to the sides and you can have a sidewalk. Uh, you, you can do a lot. So look into that. If you uh, have something you're like, I want to turn it into modular. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, mate, but uh, they don't want you to do that. So you may have to redesign a little bit to make it something that could be modular if maybe somebody added a few more bricks, or it could be modular if somebody took a few bricks away. But that's all I've got for you today. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I know it, it, it's been a weird one. It has been a weird one. But it's been an important one at the same time because, you know, we've been talking about, well, this really cool project and the fact that if I do succeed at this, you know, even if I don't succeed, I'm going to be a blind designer on this, on Bricklink. So please, whenever I announce that I've turned this project in, go to Bricklink and vote. Actually, go to Bricklink now and vote. There's plenty of projects to vote on, and they actually mentioned um, 
on their little video, which is all available on the BrickLink website. I watched the entire thing through. You should watch the entire thing through. Uh, it will give you a lot of useful information. Uh, some redundant information because for some reason people could not get over the fact that you're not allowed zoos. Uh, they were like, what, a, what, what constitutes an animal in a cage? And uh, I like, oh my god, he's explained it three times. Just, just go with what Lego does. It, that, it's that simple. You know, if Lego's not making a zoo, don't make a zoo. Um, also, no fuel. No, you, know, you can have a hopper train car. Uh, you can have historic representations of coal or fuel. But you cannot have any modern representations of it because Lego's gone electric vehicle. Uh, they got a lot of electric vehicle charging stations. And you have to do electric vehicle now too. Or you have to make your vehicle uh, not not something that can be pointed at and stated that's a gasoline powered vehicle uh, which is a shame because i love the exhaust pipes and stuff and that is going to be sad to lose our our fun exhaust pipes and our fun hot rod engines uh it's, it's, it's a very sad day but you got to move forward it's got got to be planning for a better future right and and the best way to start planning for a better future is have toys that represent that better future and that's what they're doing here they want to represent a future of um, eco-friendliness and, and, and fuels that, uh, that, that, that work within the environment and are completely recyclable. And you know, they, they're, they're trying for that stuff. They're trying for environmentalism. They're trying to get more kids to understand what environmentalism is all about. And I understand that completely and accept it. And the days of the gas station are over. And it's sad to say that the days of the electric charging station are just starting. And you know, there's not really a concrete way to do an electric charger. So, you know, because the, the, the thing's still out. I mean, yeah, yeah, right now we have the exact stable way to do gas pumps. All gas pumps basically look the same. But I, I bet you not all charging stations look the same right now. So it's that fun part of a new technology where it can be just about anything so long as it can charge a car. So... And if you do an electric charging station thing, keep that in mind. We are still at the forefront of electric charging stations, which means they can basically be anything. Just be creative. And that is what I, you know, that's the biggest thing I want to impart to you about all this. Be creative. Because that's the point of this designer program from Bricklink. That's the point of Lego Ideas from Lego is to, you know, is to celebrate creativity. So go out there and be creative. No matter what disability you have, you can still be creative with Lego. So go out there and be creative with Lego. Show them what you've got. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Bye-bye for now.